Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Tyler Evans from Arite Chiropractic in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, coming at you live for the research moment. I think it's probably been about a year since I've done one of these, and um, I just wanted to re-engage with uh, the audience out there and really uh, bring to light some information that I think I've probably done a review on before, but it's been a long time, probably a year or two or maybe even three since I did a video on post-concussion syndrome uh, and PCS. Uh, post-concussion syndrome is where uh, if you have a concussion four to six weeks later, uh, the symptoms aren't gone, the, the symptoms persist. Why is that happening? That's called post-concussion syndrome. And today I want to review this paper called uh, The Role of the Cervical Spine in Post-Concussion Syndrome. And this was done by John Letty and uh, Howard Vernon, who is a, uh, he's a, I think he was the president of a chiropractic college up in Canada, but anyways, he's a, a chiropractic uh, person and a manual therapy specialist. Uh, and John Letty is kind of the, one of the, has been one of the lead uh, concussion scientists, one of the lead concussion clinicians in the United States, especially with the NFL getting after them and really trying to figure out, you know, what's going on with uh, NFL players when they get concussed. So, in this paper, what they do is re they review the data on why post-concussion symptoms don't resolve. And <clears throat> so, cl they've, they've kind of laid out that, that clearly in the, uh, in the literature, they figured out uh, most of the aspects of the acute phase of a concussion, which is uh, they have this barrage of um, uh, chemicals in the brain. There's a, a sh uh, oh, what's it called? A shearing of the uh, of the neurons in the in the deep in the brain, and so basically you have this you know really big force that's happening in the skull, and that's a problem, and and that causes a lot of symptoms right away. But what they're finding is that there's a whole other piece to it that actually is lower down in the neck and that then prevents the concussion from healing right and so we have a whole host of other symptoms that then come in as a result so not only do we have the brain injury but we have a cervical spine injury that's happening and that makes total sense because uh, you can't hit your head without hurting your neck so that's really important for people to remember when they're researching like how do I get better what's going on you know why am I not better after four to six weeks why do I still have dizziness headaches light sensitivity sound sensitivity ringing in my ears um, uh, you know neck pain numbness and tingling all these things why aren't they getting better well this is a this is a possible uh, explanation and we see it in our practice all the time. So as upper cervical chiropractors, you know, it's really important that, um, uh, you know, we get the word out because we can help. And the reason we can help, I'm going to go into it. So uh, <clears throat> just a couple of statistics about concussions real quick. And I'm going to try to keep this under 10 minutes here. Um, so uh, let's see. 50% uh, of c concussions may go unreported, so that's really interesting to note. In an epide epidemiological study, uh, Tater et al. 2007 reported that the highest incidence for TBI is in the age, age group under 18 years, and that uh, that's almost 45% of them. And additionally, a, a, approximately one quarter of all patients with TBI are aged uh, between 19 and 29 years. So, uh, you know, it's the younger population out there, uh, you know, getting into accidents and, and getting, uh, getting injured. Uh, and that generally, that either comes from car accidents or sports injuries. Those are kind of the two big ways that happens. But I mean, I see it all the time. People fall off ladders. They, uh, you know, they, um, they have injuries around the house that they slip and fall on ice. That happens a lot on sidewalks. I, we're, we're in the Northeast here. And that's uh, it's the tis the season for that, um, as it's in February here. So, anyways, um, and this is the this is the paper I'm I'm reading off of here: the role of the cervical spine in post-concussion syndrome. And so, <clears throat> concussion injuries or mild traumatic brain injury have an estimated prevalence of 3.8 million 
per year in the United States. And that's if the other half of them aren't reported, you know, it's that's eight million concussions in the uh, in the uh, United States a year. So it happens a lot. It's really important to, to get that taken care of. So in the majority of in the majority of cases, concussion symptoms resolve, resolve within seven to ten days. However, ten to fifteen percent of, of these patients develop persistent symptomatology, lasting weeks, months, or even years after injury. Ugh, that's not good. We need to we need to get better clinicians. We need to get these people well. Uh, so one way to do that is to look at the cervical spine. Um, so in this paper, they just kind of talk about, okay, here's the acute uh, phase. This is what happens. You know, that's, I kind of went through that already. And then we have this uh, chronic phase where the symptoms are getting better. So one proposed mechani mechanism for persistent symptomatology that has not been examined in great detail is con uh, contaminant, or concomitant low-grade sprain strain injury of the cervical spine occurring concurrently with significant head trauma, basically just meaning, you know, you've got uh, uh, these symptoms in the lower neck. You've got a sprain strain of the cervical spine, which is like whiplash. Okay, so now he goes in. Okay, so we have whiplash injuries that occur uh, at low speeds. They can be a, a, as little as 4.5 Gs. G is gravity, uh, and that's you know car accidents, sports injuries, things like that where people get whiplash. And whiplash associated disorder is the correct term, sorry. Um, <clears throat> but whiplash uh, associated disorders appear uh, and those happen at four to five Gs. Uh, now, at a, at a minimum of that. Now, uh, we have high school and college football players were studied using the head impact telemetry system and were demonstrated that the range of linear impact accelerations causing concussion injury is between 60 and 160 Gs. So if you have a whiplash that happens at 4.5 Gs and you can have a concussion that happens at 60 at a, at a minimum and up to 160, well, you have the whiplash, you can't hit your head without hurting your neck, right? So the, the minimum, you're having a neck injury, okay? Um, so then if we go on and, and look at through look through this examining whiplash associated disorders have demonstrated two very important features for our discussion one uh biomechanical studies have demonstrated okay yes yeah, i already said that and then two the signs and symptoms reported by these patients with the exception of a few key differences appear strikingly similar to those experienced in mtbi so those of whiplash those symptoms of whiplash are nearly a, a you just take them and flop them over they're the same on the concussion uh, uh, side. So I have here a list of uh, symptoms from uh, the concussion and as well as whiplash, right? And so we have we have concussion symptoms uh, are headache and pr pressure in the head. We have whiplash symptoms are headache. We have neck pain under concussion. We have neck shoulder pain uh, and also reduced painful neck movements. We have nausea and vomiting. Uh, in concussion, we also have that in whiplash. We have dizziness we, in concussion. We also have that in whiplash, right? Blurred vision, we have that in concussion. We also have that in whiplash. So, huh, interesting, right? So there's a there's a possible connection there. Um, so now that now they go in to try to explain that and uh, say here are the theories as to why this could be happening. So. Um, and, and like what's happening. So <clears throat> what's interesting about this as an upper cervical chiropractor, I get, I've gotten really good at like knowing the literature and then being able to explain when there's a problem, oh, hmm, maybe that's related. And maybe this is a, a reason why the upper neck could either affect that problem, help it get better if we correct it, uh, as well as, um, you know, what are some underlying things that are happening. So to go back, uh, as an upper cervical chiropractor, I look at the spine, all right? So I look specifically at, here's the base of the skull, here's C1 uh, here, and then here's C2. Now C1 sits underneath the skull and moves like this, and C2 moves like this underneath of it. Now what we know about the cervical spine is that C1 and C2 move more than any other joints in the uh, cervical spine, and they transmit your cervical spinal cord. Your brain stem sits inside of this hole, okay? So if we have a problem down here and this moves a lot, especially in a head or neck injury and concussion or whiplash, 
this guy's going out of alignment, okay? And so what we do as upper cervical chiropractors is we measure this very carefully and we do a very specific correction without any twisting or popping and get those bones back into alignment to clear this hole out, right? To make sure that there's no tension, there's no stress on that cervical spine. To make sure that the messages are getting transmitted from the brain to the body and the body back to the brain as well as they can. So we're not treating or diagnosing anything, we are just helping your body function better by getting your brain back in charge. It's the thing that controls everything and we just wanna set it free and help it heal again and get going again. And that's really kind of what we're talking about here. We're talking about basically like a congestion that comes from the neck after these injuries. It's not clearing. Why is it not clearing? There's a roadblock, right? Um, so that's, that's what we're talking about. Now, um, <clears throat> continued metabolic dysfunction is their first theory as to what's why these problems persist. Reductions in ATP occur as early as one minute following impacts equivalent to concussion, however they say. Um, well, uh, after six, uh, six weeks, uh, those, uh, the, or sorry, um, uh, 2011, where creatine ratios were still significantly reduced at six months post-injury uh, after symptoms were gone. So then they're saying, okay, well, that can't be related. But I, what I can tell you is if there are misalignments in the cervical spine, it's going to affect uh, how the uh, the metabolic function of your cells is working your atp your they use markers of naa creatine and uh, choline ratios so basically cell function right and so cells are dysfunctional when the spine is out of alignment because it uh, decreases blood flow it decreases nerve flow it decreases uh, cerebral spinal fluid flow through the cervical spine uh, okay on to the next one theory two continued axonal dysfunction uh, what the heck is that? Just meaning uh, that the axons are not firing well, the neurotransmitters are not working right, and that goes back to that shearing force that we talked about in the brain initially. Why is that not getting better? Well, another reason could be uh, that in the cervical spine, when we have a misalignment at C1 and C2, it actually tugs down on the brainstem, on the cervical cord, and misaligns that neck. Uh, and when it does, it can shear from below what's happening above. And so we could actually have axonal dis, uh, dysfunction above in the brain due to what's happening at C1 and C2. Three, we have uh, physiological factors, okay? Phys uh, or sorry, psychological factors, it's my fault. Reading the paper wrong there. That's this guy right here. Uh, and so basically they're just saying, well, uh, PCS is complicated due to multiple symptoms that pre present a myriad of potential different diagnoses, could could be the problem, um, but depression and anxiety do show up. And they're saying, well, if people have psychological problems before, then they might have psychological, more psychological problems after. But what I know is a good friend of ours, Dr. Robert Kessinger, did an amazing paper on how when you correct the cervical spine, when you correct upper neck misalignments, another upper cervical chiropractor friend of ours, he said that, he showed that it changes function in the brain. So when we're working on the upper cervical spine we're literally changing the function of the brain and we know that and so we see anxiety gets better uh, uh, depression things like that get better under upper cervical care so there could be ex explanation good altered cerebral blood flow that is theory number four here right here okay uh, altered cerebral blood flow um, and what i know absolutely 100 percent Upper neck misalignment changes fl blood flow to the brain. We've seen that time and time again. Good friend of ours, Dr. Scott Rosa, his amazing work with Francis Smith and uh, Jay Dworkin, as well as Ray Demadian, the guy that invented upright MRI. This book right here, Craniocervical Syndrome and MRI is amazing. Uh, get it, check it out. Craniocervical Syndrome is a very similar thing. It's, it's upper neck misalignment that causes headaches, neck pain, uh, blurred, blurred vision, light sensitivity, sound sensitivity, ringing in the ears, basically post-concussion symptoms, right? They're, they're different diagnoses, but we're talking about the same problems. Okay. All right. And then finally, cases for a likely uh, cervicogenic component to concussion injuries. Well, well, well. Now we get to it. And he's got a list of uh, basically uh, cervical nuclei and tracts in the nervous system, in the spinal cord that 
could be explanations as to why these symptoms persist. He uses the lateral, lateral cervical nucleus, the central cervical nucleus, you know, and, and we can explain that away into the night, but it's, um, you know, basically you have tractioning of the cervical spine causes neurological interference up into the brain via two, uh, two ways. One is mechanical, um, <clears throat> basically, uh, uh, injury, and then proprioceptive uh, problems. So proprioceptors are what make us know where our hands and arms are in space when our eyes are closed. That's why I can do this, because I know where things are at in space, because of proprioceptors that are in my skin, joint, muscles, ligaments, and tendons. Those guys get all shook up and have no clue what's going on after an injury. So they also <clears throat> then can cause problems with uh, how the vestibular system in the inner ear is working and the eyes. So eyes, ears, and neck talk together about where the head's at in space. After a head and neck injury, things don't work right. So we get that cervical spine back into alignment. That's what we do as upper cervical chiropractors. Gentle uh, corrections to the upper neck and the brain starts talking better to the body and the body starts talking better to the brain. So, all right, I wanted to go through that real quickly. There's another paper here. I'm not gonna get into it because it's terribly long, but <laughs> cervical spine involvement and mild traumatic brain injury. What's cool about this paper was they reviewed, uh, 43 articles were, were reviewed, hypothesis of cervical spine involvement. This is a conclusion. Hypothesis of cervical spine involvement in post MTBI symptoms and in PCS, post-concussion syndrome, is supported by increasing evidence and is widely accepted clinically. Um, and so for the management and treatment of MTB MTBIs, uh, we can look at doing manual therapy and exercise as efficient tools for healthcare practitioners. So manual therapy being upper cervical chiropractic care, massage, acupuncture, um, these things can help, especially realigning that upper neck. So if you guys have questions, please uh, give us a call here at Arete Chiropractic or go online to ucspine.com, U-C and then spine.com, or, and there's a list, a doctor locator on there, or you can go to any of the technique websites, Nuka, Blair, um, Orthospinology, Atlas Orthogonal, Epic, Advanced Orthogonal, you're gonna find a, a knee chest. There, you're gonna find their upper cervical chiropractors all over the place. And uh, there's one last website is UpperCervicalCare.com. UpperCervicalCare.com. So you can go online, uh, look up an upper cervical chiropractor in your area, and uh, they can be of great help and service to you because a lot of them are friends of mine and they know this information. We live this every day. We see it in our office. People have head and neck injuries. It's what causes misalignment in the upper neck. We correct it and cool things happen. People get well. Uh, so anyways, uh, if you guys have questions, give us a call uh, and we are here for you. Have a great day and we'll talk to you again soon.